At the end of last video, we created this events shape file that has all the data about these different um, kind of fire department related events in Madison. Here, besides doing a bunch of um, kind of maybe boring import stuff at the beginning, I'm just reading in that shape file and then plotting a, a red point for each point. So it's a little hard to see what's going on, even though I have the latitude and longitude. And, and so what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, save a shape file of the city of Madison and plot that as a background. I see I have one right here on the data portal website. I'm going to download it. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to right click and say on the shape file, copy link address as. Um, and then over here, I can say w get, and then I would download that thing. I could say dash capital O and then call it city.zip. And then if I want to run this as a command in the terminal, which I do, it's not Python code. Um, I have to say exclamation mark at the beginning. And um, and then I would never leave something like this in my notebook because it's trying to run every time I run my notebook and that's pretty wasteful to keep re-downloading it. So I'm just trying to delete this. I have it once. And now if I want to, I can um, I can read it, right? I can say um, city will be city.zip. And on some versions of, um, of GeoPandas, we have to say that. So I'll do that too to be safe. And then I can say um, city.plot as well. And, um, and then to combine these, I could just, um, on the first one, I could say uh, color equals light gray. Save that guy in an AX. And then down here, I can just say AX equals AX. And now I can see all of these um, events on top of Madison. And, and of course, some of them are on the lake because the fire department does things like lake rescues as well. So what I'd like to do next is um, be able to draw this for just a specific week. And so if I look at events here and I look at these dates, one of the things I'm going to see is that, is that it's just a regular string. And so if I want to be able to work with it, I have to use this um, little function here that comes with pandas called to date time and it gives me back this nice timestamp um, object that's easier to work with and um, and the great thing too is that I can actually run this on on the whole column all at once and that would work just fine and and so right now you can see there's no real sort order to here and if I try to sort this string that might be a little weird um, but that's one of the things I can do now right after I pull that in as I can say um, events of date should be you know a genuine date and then i can actually sort the whole thing too right i can say events equals um uh, uh events dot sort values uh by date right so let me just run this again and then now maybe here i'll just look down at what my events are and great i see it starts um uh, again january 6th and then goes forward um, I also see that I have some missing data here, and the easiest way to deal with that is to know well how many rows do I have total, and if I just drop things that have um, NA in them, I see I'm losing about 17 rows. So I'm just gonna make um, a note up here as well. I'm gonna say um, uh, events equals events dot drop, and then I'm gonna say it loses 17 out of 140, um, which is not great, but it's good enough for our purposes here for the demo. Um, if I was doing something more um, kind of real, right, um, and to present it uh, in some sort of decision-making context, I might go back and I might try to figure out how to geocode those other ones that were not properly geocoding earlier. Uh, but for now, this is pretty good. And so, so I have all of this down here, and um, and what I want to do now is figure out how I can plot just one week of it. If I can plot one week at a time, that's going to get me pretty close to being able to do an animation. And so what I can do is I can um, think about, well, what week number do I want? And I may say, um, you know, you'll start at the beginning of the year. And then what I want to do is I want to get these timestamp objects. And, and then I can adapt those as necessary. All right, so maybe I'll say start equals timestamp. And actually, so this is a type that comes with pandas. And I can say the start of the year is January 1st, right? And maybe let me just look at that start. And um, if I wanted to, I could try to say, like, I want to add, like, one week times the week number. And it's trying to complain. Um, it's saying that's not supported anymore. And what I have to do is I have to create this um, time delta object, right? And the, the way I could do that is, like, so I could say um, time, pandas.time delta. 
And then I can pass in things like days equals seven. And that works pretty great, right? So I can see, um, well, it would be seven times the week num, right? Okay, so there I go. That's um, at the beginning of the year. And then if I want to, I can get the end of the week as well, which would be that January 1st. And then I can say um, times week num plus one. So that'll be an exclusive end plus one. And so maybe let me just look at both of these. And so if I want to start at, say, uh, week one, okay, that's Jan 8th through Jan 15th. Let me just like jump in the middle of the year to see what happens. Okay, July 29th through August 5th. It seems pretty reasonable, right? So that seems good. And so given these two times, I can say I want things like, um, I want my events where the date is greater than or equal to that. And the events of the date is exclusive at the end. And so that's pretty good. Now remember that this and symbol doesn't work in, in um, Pandas, since I have to say that. And then the other thing about this is that this will try to and these things together before these other operators. So um, it's a little bit weird, but I just have to put some parentheses around here, just like so. And then I can actually do things like say, well, in the first week there was just something with a chimney flu. Well, I guess there's lots of damage. Um, a torch caused thirty-five thousand dollars in damage. That doesn't sound good. Uh, there's a strand st stranded tundra swan that was rescued. So I guess that was an interesting week. And anyway, once I have that, I can actually save that week here and plot it just like this. I can say week dot plot. And, um, and and actually, I probably want to do that pretty similar to how I did before, right? I want to I want to draw the city and then draw the week on top of it, just like that. And so I can see what happened during that week. I guess you can see where the tundra swan was. Okay, so that seems pretty cool. Now I have to turn this into some sort of function um, uh, if I want to make an animation from this that takes a frame number. That's like the real key to doing animations in, in, in matplotlib. So I'm going to have something called draw frame and like this, and I may have a frame number passed in. And just to be lazy here, I may say, well, the each frame is going to be exactly one week. So I'm just trying to say the week number is, well, whatever the frame number is. And then the other thing that is a little bit different about this is, um, is that I'm supposed to not create new AX objects inside of here. I'm supposed to create them before. And so I can do that like, so I can say fig AX um, equals plot dot subplots and that's all good and then what I want to do inside of here is both of these things should go to that new place right so and I actually should call it so I can just try drawing a different thing that, that second week seemed pretty cool so I'm going to do that one and where was this this is on line nine and yeah I'm not supposed to create any new ones so I should just do it like that and there we go I can see that I can draw different frames and then if I piece this together, I'd see what's going on. The other thing I might want to do is um, in the top left, um, you know, about right here, I want to say what the actual data is. I'm going to say I have some text. And um, and ultimately, I'm going to have something like the transform equals ax dot um, trans axes, which means that um, this corner is 0, 0, and then this corner up here is 0, 1. So something like 0, 0.1 comma 0 0.9 will be the top left and then I can I'll just say hi for now that seems pretty good but then what I want to do is I want to have um, uh, I'll just put like the start date there for now as a string um, just so I can see what we're dealing with and then um, and then maybe I'll just like split it on the space and just take the first part so I can see when, when that is right so that's the week starting on the 22nd this is the week starting on the 29th so on and so forth um, that was the hard work, what we did just now. Um, the animation stuff is actually a little bit easier. So what do I do? I have to um, say, did I already import the animation stuff? I did. I said from mapplotlib.animation, import this. And, and what does this one want to do? Um, I have to say the name of my um, figure, and I have to say the name of my um, function, and I have to say how many frames I want. 
And, and so it'll take a while to actually generate 50 frames. I may start with like five frames. And then my function has to be something that takes in a frame number. And so guess what, that'll work great. I can do this right here. And then the other thing I'm gonna have to do is I should regenerate these down here. These can't really cross different cells. It is just the way that um, Funk Animation works. So I'm gonna do that. And at this moment, this is creating my plots down here. And this is actually never calling draw frame yet because it only does so once I um, uh, once I have my animation and I say something like animation to HTML5 uh, video. Like animation is lazy, I mean it doesn't actually draw any frames until you actually try to export a video. So what if I did something like that? So that will draw a bunch of stuff here. You see it's drawing on top of each other. And so one of the things that I should do to clean that off is up here I should say ax.clear um, each time. It didn't matter before, but now it's going to matter a lot. All right, so that'll stay clean. And then um, down here, well, what can I do? I can say something like um, from i, well, first off, let me just see what video looks like, right? It's this huge video tag, and I can show it like this. I can say from ipython.core.display import HTML, and then I can just, you know, it's an HTML tag. I can see my video right down here. And, and that more or less looks fine. So what else do I want to do here? Um, I think it's a little weird that I have, uh, have this showing up up here, so I should probably close that. I should say plot.close um, fig. So that's a little bit cleaner. And then the last thing I want to do is, well, let's have the whole year. So I'm going to do that, and that's going to take a moment to run. And, and then after that, we should be able to see what's happening across all of these different things. Um, another error I'm hitting here is that it's saying that some of my um, geodata frames are empty, so I guess there must have been some week with no fires to put out. And, um, and so I think that's easy enough. I can just up here say like, you know, if length of week is greater than zero, then I'll plot it. Otherwise, I guess there's nothing to do. And so then I can run this thing again and then hopefully get my full video um, at the end where we can go through all of 2020 and see everything that was burning um, uh, or, or swans that were needing to be rescued or, or um, I don't know, anything. So this will take a moment and it looks like it's already done. So let me just run this again. And now you can see it's going all the way through the entire year. And there we go. Um, August, September. November, December, and then it just starts over at the beginning. And so we can just try to see what the fire department has been doing um, during the whole year um, in terms of rescues and whatever. And, um, and maybe I would slow it down or whatever, but I think that's uh, uh, pretty close and that's as far as I'll go with this demo.